Once again, dear viewers, we welcome you to your popular program on family values. We have gotten feedback for those who have watched that they are gaining from this program. And I come to you from Deliverance Church, Living Stream Center, Kawash, here in Kisumu City, situated behind Goodka Estate along Kondele uh, Kibos Road. You are most welcome. We normally meet here every Sunday uh, at 8 in the morning to 10, and then another one 8.30 to 10.30 uh, to, to, to 1. Wednesdays we are here at 5.30 in the evening for a midweek worship service and teaching of the word. Monday we are here 5.30 for prayer and intercession as a church, praying for ourselves, praying for our churches, our families, and our country. And we you, your life will never be the same again as you join in these programs. So I'm your host, Bishop Elisa Dodge, telling you, welcome. Last time, we have been looking for a series on personality traits. We introduced ourselves to personality traits. We have looked at uh, the choleric husband or wife. We have looked sanguine husband or wife. And then the last episode, we are looking at the melancholic husband and uh, today we looked at his weaknesses and his strength today we want to look at the melancholic wife and let's read from the word of the lord the bible says in psalms uh, we are read, looking at psalms 139 and the bible says in verse 13 for you formed my inward parts you covered me in my mother's womb i will praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were, all were written, uh, the days fashioned for me. When, uh, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts towards me, O God. How great is the, uh, the sum of them. Uh, uh, I'm trying to make you understand what the psalmist is saying in this passage of scripture. That the Lord made us and he did a wonderful job. The way he made us, as I said last time, is fearfully and wonderfully. And there are certain deposits that he made within us that make us behave the way we are. In our last recording, we looked at Genesis chapter 6, and we were able to read that after the fall, God looked at man and saw that his thoughts were continually inclined towards evil. And we backed it up with a scripture in John chapter 2, we also read from verse number 24, that, verse 23, that Jesus Christ did miracles that made great multitudes follow him. But the scripture still tells us that he couldn't commit himself to any man because he knew what was in man. And that which is in man is what makes us look at personality traits. Why do you behave the way you are behaving? Why do you think do things the way you do them. What you are doing is as a result of the way you have been wired. And when we understand this, we will be able to live at peace with our spouses. And that is why in this program of Family Value, we thought it wise to look at personality traits. And we said that personality traits fall in two categories. One is called the extrovert. Another one is called the introvert. The extrovert comprises of sanguine. The extrovert comprises of choleric. And the introvert comprises of melancholic and phlegmatic. And then they are described as popular sanguine. They are described as a powerful choleric. They are also described as perfect melancholic. Today, and phlegmatic is called peaceful phlegmatic. And now you know where you belong. Whether you're a peaceful man or woman, 
You now know whether you're a powerful man or a woman in your marriage and family and wherever you are. Now you know whether you're a popular man or woman. Your presence is known anytime, anywhere you arrive. And now you also know that you're generally quiet and you give yourself to details and you're generally orderly. You now know perfect melancholic. So today we look at the melancholic wife. And the Psalms is talking of via the way we are made, the way God thought about us, and the way he made us. Friends, welcome to the program. And let us understand how does a perfect, what are the strong strength of this melancholic wife? And what are the weaknesses of this melancholic wife? Blessed be the name of the Lord. As you listen, this will help you to understand your husbands. When you look at these qualities, it will help you know where to place your wife. Once you understand the personality trait of your wife, it will help you know how to live and adjust and cope with them. Husbands, once you understand this, you'll know how to pray for them. you know how to, to support them. Vice versa. Wives, when you understand the traits of your husband, you'll know how to pray for them. You'll know how to cope up with them and support them and encourage them. Welcome to the program of who is a uh, strength of a melancholic wife. Uh, melancholic is a meticulous housekeeper. A melancholic wife is described as a meticulous housekeeper. She likes to create and maintain the ideal home. It could be this Proverbs 31 woman, maintain the ideal home. She's usually a fabulous decorator. She's a fabulous decorator and, and, and a wonderful cook. Yes, this kind of woman is a fabulous decorator and a wonderful cook. Uh, she approaches household calls in a well-organized and self-disciplined fashion. This kind of woman, she doesn't want to to, 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 she doesn't want to tell she's getting a visitor before she cleans uh, this kind of woman. She doesn't want to wait until she gets the visitors when she begins to do things. She, once she knows the visitor is coming, she's up and equal to the task. We thank God for this kind of wife. This wild kind of wife is organized. The melancholic wife is very organized. Her organizational skills extends beyond her home. Yes, it extends to the office, home, business, or church. Yes, her desk is usually in perfect order. This kind of wife, her desk is in perfect order. The drawers show that she is a melancholic. She carries a daily planner and keeps records of things like car repairs. She's the kind who invites to dinner and wait for a return invitation, then invites you again. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this kind of wife. She reads up and keeps a record of every topic and can therefore give advice in everything. She's well informed. She can give advice in everything. She's concerned about her family's health. She's so concerned about her family's health, she will make sure Vitamins and other medicines are taken diligently. So you'll often time here, you are an adult, but you're still being reminded, have you taken your medicine? It is time to take your medicine. It's telling the children, it's time to go for a shower. It's time to go to bed. It's time to do this and that. She's so much concerned, and we thank God for the strength of a melancholic wife. How blessed you are, my brother, if this is the kind of wife you really are. How blessed you will be if this is the kind of wife you are praying for the Lord to bring you away, my brother. Pray that you get a melancholic wife. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not underrating the other women, but I'm also just very excited about a melancholic wife. Amen. Yes, perfectly groomed. She always looks perfectly put together. Her appearance is neat, a fashionable. And she's a person who is well-groomed and does all to keep even a small children looking perfect. In other words, she's, 
See, it's, it's perfectly groomed. Everything is uh, done to detail, kept in order, put in place just the way you want them. A wonderful uh, hostess. He likes to prepare food, for etc., for others. A detail oriented. He's a detail oriented lady. Usually reads instruction manuals that go with appliances. Uh, that is why her appliances last longer. You buy a new machine and before you are ready to set it up, she has already set it up. She has read through the manual and you're wondering, has it taken over my role? No. That's the way she's wired. Appreciate God for her. Encourage her. Blessed be the name of the Lord. She likes to do things the right way and places great emphasis on what worked in the past. Put a lot of emphasis. It worked for us when we did this, when we did this. Yes, in a Christian walk, she has a consistent, quiet time and systematically cultivates the spiritual disciplines uh, that lead to a deeper Christian life. This, this kind of woman, you don't remind her, have you read your Bible, have you done your prayers? This is part of our organization in a Christian walk. They make serious uh, persons that devote time for personal devotion. Yes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Very thoughtful, very thoughtful. She remembers birthdays and holidays with the cards and the gifts and not the kind of gifts you grab off the self on a short notice. She gives gifts that were carefully chosen and purchased weeks in advance. Some of us men, we don't forget, don't remember the days, the birthdays, the anniversaries. But this kind of wife will keep you posted. Uh, we have so-and-so's birthday coming next week. We have so-and-so, our wedding anniversaries, what, what kind. All these kind of things, she, she has them at her fingertips. Oh, what a treasure. What a treasure for a melancholic wife. I wish I would have asked you to clap for a melancholic wife and congratulate this kind of woman. Blessed are you, my brother, when this is your wife. Yes, this, this extent is, but at the same time, it doesn't matter how much money she has, she wants to spend it wisely. She's not reckless in her expenditure. She's very thoughtful about the finances. See, money can even last some time, and you get surprised she still has it because she plans, she spends it carefully. She's not a, a, a extravagant, she's not a reckless spender, a melancholic wife. Whoa, what kind of woman? Careful decision maker. She's very cautious when making decisions and may be considered slow by others. Your husband, if you are in a hurry, especially if you are a sanguine husband, and this is your wife, melancholic wife, you may drag her, you may think she's she is slow, but thanks be to God, she is the speed governor in your life. Otherwise, a sanguine husband would make a wreck of the marriage, but thanks be to God that God somehow will bring a melancholic wife on the path of a sanguine husband. Yes, she investigates every possible angle. She, uh, uh, often she, she can avoid the problem most people fall into because she makes wise decisions in the first place and every problem before they begin. This is a strength of a melancholic wife. Uh, sophisticated. Instead of watching shallow films, she has her children watching classic films. Uh, she, re she, she, she reads documented stuff and not frivolous material. She has no time to waste on things that are uh, not very important, not very significant. She's tidy and well organized. She's intelligent, intelligent woman. She's very loyal and dedicated person. Very loyal and dedicated person. We thank God for a melancholic wife. We bless the name of the Lord for a melancholic wife. How I praise the Lord. Now, my brother, you know the strength, some of the strength. This is not a detail. This is just a summary of some of our strength the trait of a melancholic wife. You now know how to cope up with her. You now know how to pray for her because you understand her strength. Does she have weaknesses? Yes. Is she having weaknesses? Yes. What are some of the weaknesses of a melancholic wife? What are some of the weaknesses of a melancholic wife? 
she sets unrealistic standards for everything from household chores to academic and sport performances. Because of this, she's likely to create a great deal of stress for herself and those close to her. Yes, yeah, some of these standards may be very unrealistic. Some of, the, the, some of them were spoken before marriage. And, and she wanted you to visit everywhere. She wanted you to treat her like, ah, this kind of thing. And now she realizes this is not happening. And this can lead to depression in her life. May God come through for this kind of lady. Yes, uh, uh, she is cautious in making friends because she has been hurt by disappointing friendships in the past and wants to guard her heart. You may say, my wife is not very friendly. No, she is. But she's very careful. She doesn't fall in for everybody that comes the way. She is not this kind of sister, if you are not married, that is easy to approach. Every brother in the church, in the fellowship, fears her. Even when you already know this is supposed to be my wife, she analyzes you from the top to the head to the toe. She looks at your manner of dressing, the way you handle people and relate to the people, and she's just quiet, and, and she makes her conclusions about you. This kind of fellow is very cautious, and we thank God for this kind of person. Yes, very unpopular. Yes, since the melancholic is very quiet and thoughtful, she can come across as cold and distant, which can make her somewhat unpopular, although in reality she may be timid and shy. She may be timid and shy because of her wiring, because of her trait. If this kind of woman is yours, your relatives will complain about her when they come home. When your friends come home, they think she is not interested. No, that is not true. She just likes to not to behave like she's very popular, like the sanguine one or the choleric one. Not the, not the, she's not like the flag. The flag wants to please everybody. The melancholic one is very careful. Yes, she's often very guarded with her personal life and her emotions for fear that if she gets too close, her imperfections may show up. Very careful. She thinks you'll see her weaknesses. You'll discover her fears very fast. So it's very calculated steps and very uh, organized and very disciplined. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Cautious in making friends because the perfect friend is not easy to come by. When those close to her don't live up to her expectations, like listening to her endless tales of war told with painstaking details, knowing when and why she's depressed, being able to figure out why she's depressed. When she's depressed, expecting you to remember her birthday, she can become extremely bitter. That my husband can't remember my birthday. He has forgotten the birthday of his children. What kind of husband is this? No, my friend, bear with her. Rigid. At times she can find herself to be rigid. She demands strict adherence to her many, many rules and principles. For her, there's usually one way of doing the right thing. In this country, we could describe mother-in-law in the popular mother-in-law program as this. That lady, oh, may God forgive me for mentioning this, uh, but I think mother-in-law would qualify for this kind of personality trait. And that's why most of our family members find it difficult in handling this on a light touch. Yes, she can be a tough taskmaster towards family and friends. She sometimes gets so busy organizing how life should be that she forgets to enjoy life. People offend her easily. She finds mistakes with everybody because there are standards already set in her mind. And if they fall short of those standards, she becomes uneasy. Yes, uh, she, uh, she, unforgiving, unforgiving. She remembers details of wrongdoing and is the type who, who says to her husband, Oh yeah, how about the time, the, the time on July uh, 1981 when you, uh, da la 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 la, and then goes on to elaborate in accurate detail about the offense. He knows the date. She knows the time. You offended her. She has kept all those details. 
you had talked about it, you had forgiven each other, but when something comes up, it reminds you and you're wondering, didn't we deal with that? Of course, almost every lady will remind you of the past, but the melancholic wife is a bit more detailed, so detailed about it. Yes, so see, they can be so consumed with saving money that they may end up saving in unnecessary ways that generate an unnecessary hardship. This kind of woman will fall for every financial uh, uh, outlet in society. Like today, we have several financial outlets. Oh, this scheme, this scheme, this scheme. She's so keen to grab these schemes to save, to save for a rainy day, to save for that, some investment, to save to do this and that. And at times, they lose so much because at times they go into these schemes. But the good thing is, they are very analytical before they go into this kind of scheme. She has extreme mood swings. Yes, she has extreme mood swings. She can be an exciting and stimulating as anyone else in life or in, in sex. Yes, she can be so exciting and stimulating. She can also show absolutely no interest in anyone or anything, including love. This kind of person, she is not interested in very frequent sex. If she's your kind of woman, she's not very interested in frequent sex, although she does not mind occasional good shows, she is likely to become interested in sex only when she needs to get pregnant, then becomes uninterested when it is achieved. And if you are the husband, now you know. You know how to entice her. You know how to prepare. You know how to get her into the action. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated by brother, thinking she hates you, she doesn't hate you. She is the type of wife who would most likely reward or punish you with sex because the setting is not perfect, everything is not in place, and so she, can, uh, she cannot flow. So you get so frustrated when you thought you would give in, she's not giving in, she's telling you how the door is not closed, how the children have not slept, she's telling you how visitors are in the house, she's telling you how the neighbors could hear, and all these kind of things. My brother, you need to understand so that you know how to prepare her and how to overcome. She's most uh, likely to be over modest about life, sex, and her body. She may use religious arguments to avoid sex. I'm fasting. I'm seeking the face of the Lord. Souls are dying. We need to be in the presence of the Lord. You are fleshly. You can only think about sex. Language can bother that kind of talk. My brother, you need how to handle her. You need to know how to pray for her. Don't be frustrated. Once you understand that, you'll overcome some of these things. And you're glad you're hearing me. Now you know. When those things, those prolonged fasts are coming, you now know where they come from. Yes, with her... Little issues turn into huge problems. You think it is something small. I told you, she's given to details. That's one of her strengths. So even those little issues can be a mountain can come out of it. You can sit at table. You can disagree over it. And yet it was just a small matter. May the Lord help you to understand the melancholic wife. She's, she greatly revenges for little things. She feels things would be done in another way. Why so late? Why in the morning? Why have you not had a bath, etc.? Why have you repeated that trosser? Why are you using that shirt again? Why did you put your shoes at the door? A lot of wise. She's often jealous of her husband's friendliness to others. It is common after a social gathering for her to go home in icy silence, very angry and accusative against her spouse for being friendly and chatty to all the others at the gathering. Because he often marries a man who is outgoing and friendly to everyone. The melancholic wife will most likely marry a sanguine. So she gets offended when they go out. A sanguine husband is greeting everybody, trying to introduce everybody to her. Oh, God, save us. God, help us. We pray that you help husbands that are melancholic wives to understand them. She accuses her husband of flirting at times because of her popularity. Since her husband's male ego gets little praise at home, he unwisely seeks it at a social gatherings, and he may often think nothing I ever do satisfies this woman. Yeah, because he's so, that, that is a wiring. Understand her. So don't just look for it outside. Understand her. Come to our world and you'll be able to cope. She's prone to self-pity and depression. 
Yes, he can de descend into depression and lack of interest in life due to a slight rejection. So you now know that, that your wife as a melancholic wife is unable to enjoy life, happiness and the peace and the love that God brings to her because she focuses on imperfections. She focuses on imperfections and this brings frustration, this brings depression and discouragement and makes her withdrawn. You now know how to pray for her. Yes. A melancholic wife or woman's biggest problem in life is a tendency towards self-pity. Uh, a slight rejection can make her follow self-pitying thoughts into depression and she is not interested in love or anything else. She finds it difficult to accept her husband as he is without making major changes to his life and activity. She finds it difficult to allow God to change her spouse in time. She wants to be changed overnight. She's quarreling, she's accusing, she's blaming, she's thinking you're not committed to what she's suggesting. And even when you tell her, allow God, pray for him, at times she thinks God is also late in working with the husband. May the Lord help melancholic wife. She's an inhibited, a restrained person, unable to, to give much love. She needs to learn that when she sows love, friendliness, she will reap love and friendliness in return. My dear brother, my dear husband, you now know what a melancholic wife is, what her strengths are, what her weaknesses are. Pray for her. You, you need to be patient with her. You need to understand her and give attention, listen to her, give her enough time to express what is going on in her mind. Her goals may be too high to attain. Pray that the Lord will help you to live with this kind of wife. But she's also a very good wife to live with. If you're a melancholic wife, my congratulations. My dear brother, if you married a melancholic uh, wife, and especially if you're a sanguine, lucky you are, she brings the balance. She brings the balance, and that's why God brought her in your life. So don't regret she's your wife. Thank God for her with her weaknesses and her strength. And melancholic wife, may the Lord help you to understand your husband and pray for him, encourage him, support him, and enjoy life together. Melancholic wives without Jesus Christ can be difficult to live with. So I want to encourage you, you with a melancholic wife, perfect melancholic, that's the way they are described. You need the Lord in your life. You need the Holy Spirit to help you. That is when the balance will come. That is when the family will enjoy your presence, your details, your organizations, the anniversaries, the birthdays that you remind people of, even when there are no finances. Oh, when you pray and give your life to the Lord, you will be a perfect woman to live with. Your children will be excited about you. Your husband will be respected everywhere. We thank God for melancholic wives. Oh, what a woman. May the Lord bless you. Give your life to Christ, my brother. If you are frustrated with her, give your life to Christ. The Lord will help you understand her and to live with her. I want you to know, outside personality traits, there is a better thing. There is a better something. There is a better medicine. And that is the lamb that John says, Behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This lamb of God will make a difference in your life when you give your life to the Lord, when you give your marriage and your family to the Lord, you will never regret having married a sanguine husband, as a choleric husband, or melancholic wife, or melancholic uh, choleric wife, or sanguine wife. You will be able to thank God. And finally, the Bible says in Romans chapter number 12, as we close our sharing together, in Romans chapter 12 in the New Testament, there is a powerful scripture that will help you live with a melancholic uh, wife or husband. What does the Bible say? It says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Let the character traits that you have not be a stumbling block. Uh, look at the positive side of it. Put it into motion and you'll enjoy your spouse. You'll enjoy your husband or your wife. You'll enjoy your marriage. You'll enjoy your life. I'm here to tell you, 
God wants you to enjoy your marriage with your melancholic husband and melancholic wife. I congratulate you and I say the Lord bless you, bless your marriage and family. This is your host, Bishop Felicia Dodge, coming to you from Deliverance Church International, Living Stream Center, Kisumu City, Kenya, East Africa. We are situated along Kondele Kibos Road, behind Gudika Estate, around Kamarende Flats. You'll find us here Sunday morning at 7.38, the service is on motion, and 10.30 at second service begins. We are here for a powerful prayer and intercession time on Monday morning, Wednesday we are here, and we also put emphasis on family matters. We have a serious family department that normally plans meetings for couples and handles some of these issues. You will never regret contacting us, inviting us to do a seminar in your church, do a seminar in your school, and visit with you in the family to share this, some of these things. We are always willing to do that, and you are welcome, and you will never regret if you give us chance to handle some of these things. Till next time, God religiously bless you. God bless your family. God bless your marriage. God bless your husband. God bless your wife. Lord, I thank you for melancholic husbands and wives. I pray that you continue to make them a blessing with the kind of perfection that they display. I pray that you'll make them a blessing to their family, a blessing to their church, their pastor. Make them a blessing to their neighbors, oh God, their relatives and friends. And how I pray that, Lord, you will continue to use melancholic husbands and wives to the glory and the honor of your name. And this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Introduce the program to your friends. Send a text to us. Let us know how this has impacted you. If you have a question, don't feel shy to ask us. We'll try to answer the best we can. Or you can also seek the help of your pastor. You can seek the help of your counselor on some of these things we are sharing. And your life will never, ever be the same again. Amen.